Hey guys, it's Rob here. Today on Hammered Halo Projects, I'll be building this rustic farm style coat rack and shelf using some pallet wood and some scrap pieces of two x four I had laying around. Now I only have about 20 inches of wall space to work with here, but pallets are typically four feet wide. So you could definitely build it larger. I don't like using pallet wood too much in my projects, but I happened to come across a really nice clean one the other day. So I stopped and threw it in the truck. The ones I usually come across are really beat up or even sometimes painted in different colors so when I saw this one I couldn't pass it up. I want to try and keep the original nails in the pallet wood so here I'm just creating a slight gap between the 2x4 frame of the pallet and the top oak planks by using a 2x4 as a lever. I'm going to try these new Sawzall blades from Starrett. This is the first time using these blades so I'm not too sure on their performance but we'll soon find out. What I'm doing here is basically cutting all the nails off, but leaving the nail heads in the planks. Now that the pallet is disassembled, I'm left with around 12 usable oak 1x4s and two 2x4 frame pieces, which I don't think I'll use for this project, but I'll save them for another one. I pulled these three leftover 2x4 cutoffs out of my wood pile. I'll be incorporating these into the build of this coat rack, and I'll show you a really cool, inexpensive way to make these pieces look old and weathered by opening up the grain before applying the finish. I'm using my Bosch 8.5 inch miter saw to cut the 2x4 border pieces here. I use this saw a lot. I happen to find it on a crazy discount day at a local big box store. I think I paid like 125 for it. And I've seen this same saw retail at other locations for about 500 bucks. So I don't know what was going on that day, but clearly I won. I won, get over it. I'm cutting off the outer cracked and broken edges of the oak planks from the pallet, then trimming them down to the proper size for the middle vertical sections between the two by four border. I want to cut a rabbit joint into the top and bottom 2x4 so that the oak 1x4s sit flush on the back side of the frame. This should also strengthen up the whole piece once it's glued together. I'm just going to use my DeWalt job site saw to cut these rabbit joints. This process is pretty simple, simply by adjusting the blade to the width of the oak 1x4s. Here you can see how nicely they fit together with the 2x4 frame. I'm using a Craig pocket hole jig to drill holes on the back side of the two side 2x4 pieces and these will be used to fasten the frame together. Now before I screw this all together, I want to rough up and open the grain on these 2x4s so they kind of match the roughness of the pallet wood. I found the easiest way to do this is to simply use a wire wheel attachment for my drill. These wire wheels cost like two bucks and they last a really long time, especially when you're only using them on wood. Now if you work it back and forth with the grain of the wood, you'll get a really cool effect and you can make it as deep or as shallow as you want just by controlling the variable speed on the drill. Just make sure to cover all the exposed sides of the wood. I want a small shelf built onto the top portion of the coat rack but I want it to look like a solid chunk of pallet wood so to do this first I'll cut a 2x4 one inch longer than the frame and from there proceed to wrap it with the oak pallet planks. However if you remember I left the nail heads in the pallet wood so I'm not able to plane this wood down to take out the warp in the planks. So the biggest issue with wrapping this top 2x4 is going to be the gaps that are left between the miter joints when it's done. But I'll show you an easy way to mask them before applying the stain. I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle on all the oak pieces that will cap the top 2x4. But because the 2x4 and the 1x4s are the same width, once I do that, I'll now have to also rip down the top 2x4 to make it fit together nicely. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And for the mitered cuts on the ends, I'm just using a compound feature on the miter saw to make these cuts. Here's all the pieces cut to complete the wrap of the top shelf. And yes, I broke this one, but nothing a little glue can't fix. That's the benefit of building something rustic. All right, after gluing and using some brad nails, I was able to wrap this shelf as tight as possible given the warp in the wood. You can see all along the edges are gaps that I now need to fill. I'm using a dark mahogany filler and I'm just gonna fill all the gaps and let it dry. 
Now that the fill is dry, at this point, if you take a round cylinder object, maybe like a screwdriver, or in my case, I'm going to use the shaft on a Forstner bit and run it over all the miter joints, you'll find that this procedure rounds over the edges just enough to make it look like one solid shelf. Now you can't get away with this kind of trickery with fine woodworking, but when it comes to rustic pieces, it totally works. Here I'm gluing the side 2x4s to the horizontal 2x4s and then clamping it together before turning it over and screwing it together using the pocket holes. Now I can install the top shelf again by clamping it together and using the pocket holes I drilled previously. I'm going to use a product called Restore Finish. And this is not typically used as a stain, but more for filling scratches and scuffs on older furniture. But I had it laying around and I really think the dark oak shade of this goes well with the rustic look. So I'm applying it with a one inch brush, letting it sit for about 15 minutes and then wiping off the excess. Okay, it's had about 24 hours to dry and now I'm applying three coats of fast drying polyurethane in a satin finish and that will keep the stain from coming off as well as give it kind of a dull rustic finish. I found these cast iron deer head coat hooks online. I do think they kind of go with the whole theme of this piece so I'm going to be using them as the hooks. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love to have you. And also, if you like the video, do me a favor, smash that like button, turn on the notification bell, and until next time, peace.